welcome to another video and this is how to deadlift 700 pounds episode six i want to say seven maybe who knows um so before i started i wanted to quickly tell you that i put these videos into a playlist so the <laughs> this deadlift series i'm currently doing um like i said six or seven i think six episodes in if you look down there somewhere there will be a playlist uh, called how to deadlift 700 pounds and you can go back and look through these videos um, because I think it could be potentially very helpful. Like I know two years ago, for example, I would have loved to know what I know now. Like if I did know that, I'm pretty sure my deadlift would be a lot more now than it currently is. Um, I mean, I found these things out by myself through kind of trial and error and research and stuff, but for those of you who are new to deadlifting or maybe hit a bit of a deadlift plateau, for example, um, I reckon it'd be very, very helpful. So feel free to go down and look through the playlist um, and I reckon it could, yeah, help me deadlift out quite a lot. But before I get on to the topic today, I thought I'll show you my deadlift highlights from the week. So here you go. Okay, so um, similar to last week, to be fair, and that it was pretty, not like not really tough, but like a slower than I'd like. Like I said it last week, I felt like um, yeah, deadlifts weren't moving as as kind of smoothly as I would like. And this week, to be honest, has probably been a bit worse. Uh, also, before I carry on, I noticed that my jump, my top is definitely clashing with the kind of turquoisey coloured cushions. I mean, that's annoying me just looking at it myself. So I imagine you're finding that quite frustrating, but. I mean, it's a fitness channel, so get over it. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's been a bit tough. It's been moving a little bit um, slowly. I mean, I'm pretty sure the reason for that is quite simply, this is the third cycle of this training program that I've been running now, and the numbers have been ramping up the whole time through. So particularly with my squat, <clears throat> I started off very conservatively because obviously I was changing my squat technique. And so what happened there is that in the first cycle and most of the second cycle, obviously where I always deadlift after my squat, because my squat is not mega heavy, I felt fairly fresh with deadlifts. Now that my squat's starting to get back to the best it's been, in fact, probably maybe the best it ever has been, the numbers are hit quite heavy again, and so I'm not, I'm doing my squat session going into my deadlifts and obviously feeling a bit more fatigued because the squats have been heavier. So in that case, it is a little bit frustrating because obviously it's nice hitting deadlift uh, good deadlift numbers and move the bar moving fast for, for confidence and stuff, but to be honest, the volume is the same as it would be anyway. Um, and like I said, I am playing the long game. I do know that when it comes to test week, my deadlift will be feeling good. That is always the case. So I can put it to the back of my mind, just kind of get the volume done. As long as the RP is not mega high and it's not, you know, I'm not getting any higher than like a an eight or, you know, seven, eight or so. So that's fine. So I'm happy just to carry on and um, yeah, just, just keep moving through the program. So in terms of this topic or the topic for this week, I'm going to talk about, and you probably guessed it, unless you are illiterate, um, diet and how diet relates to the deadlift. So, before I start, a little disclaimer. When I say diet, I'm not talking about like, you know, eat peas and onion rings and your deadlift will go up. You know, there's, I'm not talking about specific foods, I'm talking about diet in terms of overall cal calorie uh, intake, you know, whether you're cutting or bulking or whatever, and the effect that has on the deadlift. Now, 
in in uh, in short, the answer is that it doesn't really have any effect at all. Like your diet is not going to have a massive effect on the deadlift in the same way as it would on the other lift. So, for example, your squat and particularly your bench press. If you go on a big bulk, your bench press is going to go up pretty quickly. I mean, for me personally, in the space of a literally you know a few days, a week, if I eat really aggressively, and I don't mean like throw food in my face, I mean eat loads of food, my bench press will literally go up, you know, almost overnight. Squat, fairly similar. Deadlift doesn't really make a difference and that is the same, uh, you know, I, all, all my clients that I train have the same thing. Everyone I speak to experiences the same thing. It doesn't really work for deadlift. So if you are looking to increase your deadlift, if that's what you're focusing on in your training, don't think, oh, I'll go on a massive bulk and my deadlift's going to fly up because it won't be the case. And if you think about it in terms of your strength to weight ratio, even if it did go up by a little bit, if you put on say 10 kilos or 20 pounds or whatever, and your deadlift goes up by a little bit, your strength to weight ratio has dropped pretty drastically. So it's not worth it. it you know, the way to incre increase your deadlift is obviously to, to deadlift, you know, to get your form right and just to get the volume in and be patient. So um, I think the reason for that, I mean, there are different theories. In my opinion, the reason for that is obviously, you think about a squat and particularly a bench press, the big you are, the, the the shorter the range of movement. You know, bench press, quite simply, if you're if you're heavier, your chest is gonna be bigger and therefore the bar is not traveling as far. With a squat, if you're bigger, the the distance that you can drop down to hit full depth, like from your hamstrings hitting your hitting your calves is gonna reduce because you've got more mass there, you know? So your 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 joints, your hip and your knees kind of padded out. Deadlift, although you could argue the same thing as the case, it, you're starting from a dead stop, you know, so that, that having kind of being bigger and having those joints padded out is still not going to make as much of a biomechanical advantage as it will with the squat and particularly the uh, the bench press so quite simply putting on weight is not going to help and actually in some cases can be detrimental like if you pull conventional i know a lot of people that have struggled some of the guys that are, you know the massive guys that start to get quite fat they find it really hard you know their squat and, and, and their bench press absolutely take off the deadlift can plateau sometimes go down because they can't physically get in position. You think you're wearing a belt and you're trying to get down into quite a deep position to set up for your deadlift. If you've got a massive fat belly, obviously you're going to find it really hard to do that. So in some cases it can actually be harder and can make your deadlift worse. And if you look at, um, you know, there are numerous examples, even on YouTube, of guys who have a pretty big deadlift, a respectable deadlift, but you look at them and you think, you know, if you saw them on the street, you wouldn't even know they uh, they work out. You know, they're quite skinny. So it is a very strange lift. Like the squat, you can generally recognize a squatter. You know, if someone's got a big squat, they're generally going to have big legs. That's fairly unavoidable. Bench press, they're going to have a big chest. It's quite rare. You'll struggle to find someone that bench presses a lot that's skinny. You know, it's very, very rare. But there are quite a lot of deadlifters who have big deadlifts. Um, and then, like I said, they're not, you know, they're not big guys. So it just goes to show that size is not, does not equate to a big deadlift. You know, in some cases, having more mass if it is usable mass may be useful, but there is different, definitely nowhere near the correlation between uh, getting bigger, putting on weight, and a bigger deadlift as there is with a squat and a, and a bench press. So in short, do not go nuts and eat loads of food if you're looking to increase your deadlift because quite frankly, it's not going to help and it could actually go the other way and be detrimental. Um, just be patient, uh, train properly, make sure your technique is right and it will go up over time and just go and watch the playlist that I've made for you uh, over the last couple of months because there's loads of deadlift tips in there, very useful, usable tips that I think you will find helpful. And that, my friends, is all I'm going to say about that. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you found my deadlift tips over the last couple of months useful, please give the video a like, and I will see you tomorrow.